Lumion is all about breathing life into your renders, making them feel alive. And Lumion 11 Pro comes with a new exciting phasing effect to simplify this process. Through the power of animation, you can use the phasing effect to communicate the process behind your design's development or construction. Apply different transitions, make parts of your building appear and disappear, and highlight what makes your building creative and unique. You can create animations like this one in just a few minutes. Any Lumion object can be used in a phasing animation. For example, trees, furniture, decorations, or even imported items. In this tutorial, we will show you how to animate this stylish winery so you can watch it seemingly assemble itself from a kit of parts. To do this, we first need to split up the model in the design software. In this case, we've used SketchUp. Create sensible groups for the parts that you want to animate, and be sure to give the groups useful names. Export each group one by one in a file format that Lumion can handle. For this example, it's a collada file, or a DAE. Make sure that while exporting, you specify Export Only Selection Set in the options. You should find a similar option in other design programs. Import these group objects into Lumion, all in the same folder. Position each object at the origin. You can do this with a manual adjustment as long as you zoom in close enough to the origin or you can be more precise and type in the coordinates 000. Here's another way of aligning multiple objects to one location. Select all objects you want to align by dragging a box around the objects while holding the control key down. Then in the advanced options in the top right, click on align positions. And just like that, all objects are aligned. Create a scene like you always do in Lumion by assigning materials, setting the sun position, and crafting the environment. For this project, we use the new Lumion 11 OSM satellite maps for the background. Add trees, plants, and furniture objects. Create logical layers and assign the objects to these layers. Now we are ready to create a phasing animation. Let's start with a relatively simple one to learn the basics. First, with all the layers on, create a simple camera path with a bird's eye perspective. Increase the time to 10 seconds. Let's apply the realistic style. Now, add the layer visibility effect since we want to hide a few layers first. The video time should be set at zero. Let's add a keyframe here. Let's switch off cars, lights, people, furniture outdoor, light fixtures, decoration items, barrels, and nature decoration. This way, our movie will start by only showing our building and a few other things. Next, add the new phasing effect. You'll find it under the animation category. Click on the edit icon to open the phasing editor. You should now see the timeline, which will display our phasing effects as we add them. The first phasing effect is already on the timeline, and you can see its options at the top left. Click on the box that says zero items. Here, you can select the items that you want to include in this particular phase group. Our goal here is to animate all the imported parts of the building. To do this, we need to select those parts for this phasing effect. To make the selection process easier, we can turn off any layer that contains objects we don't want to include in this specific phasing animation. In this case, we'll leave only the building layer visible. This makes selecting much easier as it allows us to select objects from a particular layer without accidentally picking something up we don't want. Now, let's drag a selection box around the building while holding down the control key. Click on one of the nodes to add what we selected to our phasing effect. To confirm, click on the check mark button at the bottom right corner. Make sure to name your phasing effect by editing the text at the top. Now, you can see that there are 17 items in the group. Lumion can automatically animate all of the individual building pieces we selected by simply setting the stagger slider to its maximum. Set the duration of the start animation to just under the maximum. Notice that the dark blue color in the timeline changes as we increase the duration. This represents how much time our items will be moving in total. Let's personalize this a bit by choosing which type of animation the items will have when they enter our scene. In the Effects dropdown, 
select SkyDrop. Click on play to see what happens. All 17 parts of the building are dropping down one by one. Click on the Save Changes checkmark button. This will take us back to movie mode where we can play the movie to see how it looks. I think there are a few opportunities for improvement. First, the ground surface would look better if it were present from the beginning. So let's remove it from our item selection. Click on it so that it turns yellow, indicating that it is no longer part of our selection. Objects highlighted in green are the ones that remain selected. Second, it looks like the roof is falling first, while it would make more sense if it fell last. We can reverse the order of the objects by clicking the Invert Stagger Order button. Another way of getting the objects to animate in the right order is to select them one by one instead of using a selection box, and then turn on the Use Selection Order option. This will ensure that objects get animated in the order you choose. For objects that are all located on the same position, as in this case, that can be a bit hard to achieve as some objects are hidden by others. Third, I think the objects made a bit of a rough landing. We can soften the landing by setting the ease in slider to the max. Lastly, it would be better if the phasing effect started a little later, say after one second, and was finished before the end of my movie's camera animation. Let's reduce the duration to eight seconds and shift the whole bar to the right so it starts one second later. Now, let's take another look. Definitely better but there are still a number of small items taking up as much time as some of the larger items, like the walls and the roof. To improve this, we need to create multiple phasing effects with different selections of the building parts. Before we do that, let's look at some of the other effects that you can use in your animation. Pop in causes the objects to appear from the object's center point. Ground rise makes them rise up from below the surface. An implode uses the center of the group as a reference in making the objects appear or disappear. The invisible before start switch allows you to make the objects invisible before the start of the animation. With move distance, you can set the animation's start position. This gives you control of the duration of each object's animation. Here is where your creativity can really shine through. By creating multiple phasing animations, you can make some items appear from below the ground and others from above at different points of the movie. There are infinite combinations you can use. Before we create a movie using multiple phasing effects, let's first make sure all the other items from our scene become visible at the end of the current effect when our building finishes phasing in. The easiest way of doing this is to extend the movie's length. Go to the moment in the timeline that we want to bring everything back in. Add a keyframe in the layer visibility effect and switch all layers back on at that point. Now we can render the clip and check out the result. Let's now create a more controlled phasing using multiple effects with different start effects. Delete the current effect by double clicking on the small trash can icon. That way we can start fresh. Now let's make a few different item selections that fit logically together and make a more meaningful phasing animation. Let's start with the big item, the roof. Create a new phasing effect and name it Rooftop. Click on the items box and then click on the roof. It will look best if the roof falls down from the top. So select SkyDrop as the start effect. This will be the last effect in the entire animation sequence. So let's shift its bar to the right side of the timeline to about six seconds. If you now shift the timestamp to earlier than six seconds, you can see the state of the building without the roof. Switch off invisible before start and set the move distance lower to around 10 meters. Switch on invisible before start again. Let's make another phasing effect with the other roof items. Call it roof support girders. Now it's time to add the other roof components to it. Since these are underneath or behind other objects, clicking on their surfaces to select them will be hard to do without strategically and tediously flying through the model. An easy way to make this selection is to position your cursor above the node that represents all imported items. Make sure you have imported models selected in the categories for this. Even if the nodes are all stacked on top of each other, we can toggle through them using the up and down arrow keys. The one we're looking for in this case is called O3 Canopies Detail. 
This is why it's important to also name your models. The standard duration of any new animation is one second, indicated with the dark blue color. Let's leave it at that for now. Just like with the rooftop, let's decrease the start position by first switching off invisible before start, adjusting the move distance slider, and then switching invisible before start on again. You can also check where the start position is by moving the timestamp to the very start of the effect and looking at where the object is in the scene. You don't want to miss the action, so make sure your camera is facing where the effect starts from. Now, let's animate the walls. To select them, you can fly around the building by moving your camera position just like in build mode. Let's set the effect type to ground rise for the walls. Set stagger to the max and test it out. You might also try reversing the stagger order to see if it looks better. Since this selection contains several items, let's increase the duration to two seconds. Let's now collect some of the smaller elements together so they appear using just one phasing effect. Add some small objects to this group from the category imported models. If you find it difficult to locate them, you can toggle through all imported models that are located on the same position by positioning your cursor above the node and then toggling through them using your up and down arrow keys. Select the ones that you want to appear in the same animation phase. Let's set this effect to implode. Set the move distance to 10 meters and stagger to the max. Now we have the basic effects right. All the other items will appear at the end of the animation due to the layer visibility effect we set earlier. You can always click on each phase effects bar within the timeline to bring up its properties in the top left. One improvement we can make is to set the ease in of all phase effects to the max. Now, let's watch through the whole animation again. It certainly looks a lot better than before. Instead of this drone style camera path, we can also make more dramatic eye-level animations. Here's an example. It has 13 groups spread across three pages. Take a look at what these other Lumion users have done with these effects. Phasing animations are not only useful to tell the story of how your design comes together, it can be used to tell a construction story, show landscaping options, present unique interior design styles, create time-lapse sequences, and so much more. Well, that wraps up this tutorial on Lumion 11's new animated phasing effect. I hope you'll have fun with it, and don't forget to subscribe to get notified when our next tutorials come out. I'll catch you in the next tutorial.